Hello and welcome to this special breaking news edition, kind of breaking, I guess it happened about four hours ago. I finished Fastlane and then I went onto the Twitter to check some reactions, see what people thought of the show. And hey, get ready for some production. That's a little screen I just made come up. I saw that Andrade has been released by WWE. Look, here's the official Look at the production values on this, right? Andrade has been released by WWE. They use the standard line, WWE has come to terms on the release of Andrade. We wish him the best in all of his future endeavours. First off, just a weird time to announce it. After the pay-per-view. Fastlane must have been about half hour in the bag. And then they go to Twitter, they go to their website and publish this. So who knows when they decided it? I've got some other bits to kind of suggest when it seems earlier in the day on Sunday before the show this was thought up because usually for WWE they tend to wait for Fridays to release anyone or at least to announce it publicly because that kind of buries it amongst the weekend you know it's a good time to release bad news on a Friday because everyone looks at their phones sees it goes ah, well that sucks weekend maybe lockdown's different though I don't know bit awkward on a pay-per-view weekend though because typically more interest so to do it at like the height of wwe search traffic which is typically immediately following a pay-per-view on a pay-per-view day odd decision um because typically wwe quite media savvy they don't want people to search to see what happened at the pay-per-view oh that guy's been released so that uh showed up on twitter i'm circling through pre-prepared tabs here now, this this kind of started two weeks ago when Ringside News, I believe, first reported that Andrade had asked for his release in WWE. Dave Meltzer then added that the release had been denied by WWE. So unhappy unhappiness there. Uh, Andrade hasn't wrestled for WWE since October 2020. He got a little injury at the time. If you remember, there was that just storyline that would never end with Andrade and, uh, oh my God, I forget, Angel Garza and Zelina Vega. And for a brief period there, Austin Theory. Remember that? God, it was a long lockdown, that first stage in the performance center. So they were all together and they didn't know what to do with them. They feuded with the Street Profits for eternity. And then they just slowly fizzled out. Gaza's got nothing to do right now apart from being fed to Bad Bunny on episodes of Raw. Theory's gone back down to NXT. Zelina Vega was, of course, released as part of the whole third party uh, services controversy. And Andrade just sort of disappeared into the background. This was around the time of the draft. And a lot of people were annoyed that first Alistair Black was way down low on the picks. But then Andrade was never even drafted. He was never put on Raw or SmackDown officially. And we're all like, okay, well, what's going to happen here? He is in a pretty good position in that he's engaged to Charlotte Flair, one of the more favoured people backstage in WWE. There were reports around that time that Andrade and Charlotte were going to return together and have a sort of power trip couple act, which I thought would have been pretty good. But no, Zelina Vega's gone. D D Garza's doing something new. And this, this is off the back of Paul Heyman when he was the executive director of Raw up until June last year. Andrade was one of his guys. He was a Paul Heyman guy. So was Alistair Black. So was Buddy Murphy. But like Dave Meltzer said, all those guys that you saw pushed uh, leading through Heyman's reign of Raw, he said all of them were just going to drop by the wayside as soon as Bruce Pritchard took over. And look, where's Alistair Black been? Andrade's just been released. So true words there. I guess Drew McIntyre's champion. Well, wasn't champ he was champion for a while. He's done okay. So is Bobby Lashley. Um, but these the, the more sort of mid-card talent that WWE has historically seen people as. Uh, yeah. So Andrade confirmed those rumors on Thursday. He said, the rumors are true and I don't know what the future holds, but I want to make my dreams come true. Thank you for giving me so much support these days. Los Romelos. I mean, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to assume he's saying the same thing again in Spanish, you know, like you do at the Olympics. Here it is in English. 
here are the same rules in French. I'm not going to learn another language. I'm British. I'll just say the first part louder than any native Spanish speakers. The rumours are true, and I don't know what the future holds. Dos Avethas, por favor. Anyway, they, he said that on Thursday. And typically, when wrestlers come out and say, yeah, well, I tried the respectful route. I requested my release backstage. I didn't make a fuss. Uh, but then they said no. So I've just come online and said it's true anyway. So we've seen Mike Canellas do this. We saw Brody Lee do this. Typically, WWE do not react well to people coming out and say they're effectively being held hostage uh, on their contract. Legally so, they signed the contract. It's WWE's decision whether to let people go or not. Um, but yeah, not a good look. So we've seen in the past that WWE just sort of make these people wait their contracts out or at least release them 90 days before it's about to expire, which, you know, with the 90-day non-compete clause, ends up being the same thing anyway. Andrade was said to be absolutely miserable backstage at an episode of Raw recently after he was denied his, his release. Uh, he said he, after this, he removed WWE from all his social media as well. Um, but then, yesterday, Sunday, before the pay-per-view, he tweeted, versus country? Company, hashtag tranquillo, and then three fist bump emojis. One, two, three. Uh, which is kind of, I guess, a way of saying, who do you want to see me face? And in isolation, when you see that, you're like, okay, he's just doing the standard dream match tweet engagement stuff. Won't chalk that up to anything much right now. It's definitely locked down. But then... A couple of hours after, 11.30 p.m., which that that's GMT time, so that's UK time. That would have been half an hour into the main fast lane show starting. Pretty weird time to make a decision, don't you think? Uh, surely they've got more things to do, like running a pay-per-view, the first one on the Peacock Premium service. So Andrade tweets out, good news. Then Buenos Noticias, which I'm guessing is also good news. Uh, Tranquillo, hashtag happy, hashtag blessed. See that on Instagram. So people are like, well, what's happened here? Obviously, it's because he's been released. There's that big picture again. And that was announced, you know, shortly after Fast Lane finish. So Fightful Select has now added, of course, go over to Patreon, Fightful Select. Sean Ross Sapp is the worst but it's a very good service. Uh, they have reported uh, more about the terms of this release. So apparently everyone backstage is surprised to hear of WWE letting Andrade go as early last week, they were told not to expect it to be immediately granted. So something seems to have changed here. Uh, and there's been a change of heart over the past week. So Whatever decision there was on Monday and Tuesday last week when Raw was looking, when, sorry, Andrade was looking, quote, absolutely miserable. And then, you know, he came public on Thursday. Uh, something's changed. And there is a 90 day non compete clause attached to the deal, which will take Andrade out of action in North America, at least, I believe, until the 20th of June. So don't expect him to turn up on Dynamite this week. Although, you know, maybe they'll start teasing another Hall of Fame-worthy signee shortly. So he is allowed to use the name Andrade because that's his real name. That's not the name he used before joining WWE. Of course, he was La Sombra uh, down in Mexico in CMLL where he wrestled behind a mask. You know, look at that guy. What the hell was he doing under a mask? Look at that beautiful face. He's one of the most handsome men in WWE. Anyway, well, Alas, not anymore. Uh, so who is the most handsome man? It's Drew now. Showing His entrance music has an erection noise. So he can use the Andrade name. There's not much WWE can do about people's real names, although I'm sure they would like to. Uh, but he can't use the Cien Almas part that he had in NXT. So remember, he used to be Andrade Cien Almas. And, you know, Cien is 100. So Andrade Almas and then Cien was the sort of 
nickname part of that. But in WWE's way, they just simplified it down to one name, like Madonna. Uh, so that happened. So Andrade can be Andrade, or he can go back to being La Sombra. I guess he can be both, right? You know, have have one version as the masked guy, have one version as Andrade, the beautiful, handsome face man. So what next? Of course, we won't see anything in North America, at least, until the 20th of June. Uh, I, I, maybe that does apply for overseas as well. But of course, you think he wants to go back to Mexico and, you know, potentially even wrestle in Japan. There's an interesting historical note to all of this, of course, because Andrade is a founding member of, I'm going to butcher it, Los Ignorables, which is a Mexican faction formed by him, Roosh and Dragon Lee, who are now in Ring of Honor um, in CMLL. They they did that. And during Naito's uh, sort of excursion, which is when Japanese wrestlers go around the world to sort of learn other styles, Naito became a part of this as well. And that's what formed the Japanese version of Los Ignorables, Los Ignorables de Japan or something, Japan, Japan. And that's that cool faction that just kind of broke up, you know, with Sonada and Evil, because Evil turned heel and everything. And Naito was, was the leader there, but that sort of combusted through 2019 and 2020. So Naito is all alone. And a lot of people are now clamoring for that Tranquillo, because that's their taunt thing that Andrade popularized as La Sombra, to go to New Japan. If You know, if it's past June, then possibly the G1 tournament. You know, have a tear through that and then face off against Naito, form some kind of partnership. That seems to be what the fantasy bookers want, at least. I don't know how much that will really draw three, four years after the faction was kind of at its height of popularity across the world. Um, but of course, you know, Ring of Honor as well. He could go there. Uh, that would have to be past 20th of June, definitely. Probably rule him, definitely rule him out for double or nothing in AEW because that is May. So maybe hold that off until the September, late August, all out pay per view. Uh, and, you know, there is a perfectly good Zelina Vega, now going by her actual name of Thea Trinidad, sitting right there. That amazing act of Andrade and Vega could be coming as a package. Me personally, let me know what you guys think. And because they are awesome, brilliant together, I do think there is a danger of that being something of the past. You know, worked very well in the past. WWE on the main roster did their best to drive it into the ground. I'm not sure I now want to see them go back to that well. Even the NXT version that was absolutely awesome and led to that, of course, brilliant NXT title run with that fantastic Philadelphia match against Johnny Gargano. I love the match against Drew McIntyre as well, to be honest, the one where Drew injured his bicep. Andrade won the title. I think that's correct. Oh, God. I'm not good at Quizzlemania stuff. So, yes, you could bring... Maybe that's why they have been holding off on bringing a Trinidad in somewhere, because they're like, ooh, Andrade could join her. That's a money act. You know, like, why would you just bring in Enzo if you could also bring in Big Cass? That kind of mentality. Yeah, me personally, I think just bring him in as Andrade. Bring him in as Andrade, maybe a new gimmick. Uh, just... you. So many of these sort of mid-card NXT call-ups that WWE eventually botched, I think you just want to wipe that sort of disappointment off. Start afresh, start with a new gimmick. So I wouldn't bring him in with fear. Uh, although I think, you know, if they did, that would also work very well. Um, so why has this happened? I guess. Because as I said... WWE aren't just in the act of releasing people because people asked, because there's a wrestling talent war going on right now, not just with AEW, but with Impact, with New Japan. You know, there's all of these other promotions are now ganging up on WWE. And if, you know, strategically, cynically, this is the worst time to give sort of positives to your opponent. And Andrade is nothing but a positive. Christian, nothing but a positive. Big show. These are big names. Like, you can't just let people walk out like this. And WWE, traditionally, like if you look at FTR and Brody Lee, they kept them really until the very end of their contracts. Uh, I know the 90-day non-compete stuff was kind of thrown in there too, but ultimately... They kept on for them for a long, long time. Rey Mysterio, they very aggressively pursued to re-sign with them as well because they were scared he'd go to AEW. 
Now, this is because they learned a lesson when they didn't take AEW seriously at the start of 2019. When they thought, ah, Dustin Rhodes, he's at the end of his career. Huh. Ty Dillinger, he's never going to get beyond a certain level. And they walk into AEW and, you know, Ty didn't have the best start. We had a, a big start, but then faded into mediocrity, unfortunately, as, as Sean Spears. But now he's part of one of the biggest factions with the pinnacle and MJF. Dustin Rhodes, an immediate asset for AEW, where he had that five-star match with Cody Rhodes. Excellent match. Um, a double or nothing 2019. And then he's just been a, you know, a tremendous training presence backstage, teaching the young guys stuff, how not to throw punches to the dark order. So th th they learned their lesson there. And from that point on, because they WWE seemed to let them go out the goodness of their hearts. And then they, they clamped down on that hard since then. In fact, the only time they really release people is when they've got to do a big round of budget cuts. And by that point, you kind of flood the market and a lot of the the intrigue is taken away from it because there's almost too much choices. It's, it's you know, it's a brutally tactful move. Um, very smart, though, if, if you're an evil person. But why Andrade? Why do they grant his release now after saying they wouldn't? I don't know. This is speculation on my part. He's engaged to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair is one of their more featured performers. She's the most pushed person in all of their women's division. She's got the mainstream composure. She's the person you send to interviews to, to represent the company. She's the person you put in the WrestleMania main events for no reason. She's the person who always holds the title. She's the person they push as a baby face, whether we like it or not. They want to keep her happy. And I bet having your fiance just booked into oblivion and then told to just sit in catering week after week. That's not going to just make him frustrated. It's going to make him unhappy. These are wrestlers. He's in the prime of his career. He's 31 years old. He doesn't want to sit in catering while he could be going out there and putting on amazing matches. And we saw him put on that series with Rey Mysterio back on SmackDown. Fantastic stuff. But now, like on the main roster, of course, he had loads down in NXT. So you've got to think, like, surely Charlotte Flair has just been like, look, guys, don't be dicks on this one. Let my boy go. And, I, you know, that's just speculation on my part. But let, let me know what you think is the real reason behind this release, because it is definitely a change of heart on WWE's points down in the comments below. Uh, just a few other points. What does this mean for Alistair Black? You know, he's another person who's very similar to Andrade, who's almost on the inverse of this, in that it was his partner, his wife, Zelina Vega, who was released by the company. And Black has just been, you know, also sitting with nothing to do, no plans for the guy. He lacks someone going to bat for him, though. He doesn't have a Charlotte Flair to go maybe fight his battles uh, to, to Triple H or whoever. So I, you know, I presume Black is someone they'll just keep until he he either resigns or his contract expires. And another interesting one is Charlie Caruso. Charlie Caruso is someone who is apparently unhappy backstage. This came out on Thursday last week that people don't like working with her at the moment because she's late to interviews and she's just there was a quote over the weekend generally unpleasant to be around. So maybe they're going to get rid of her. Typically, post WrestleMania is when they get rid of a lot of people. That they, you know, they they save stuff up for a bit of spring cleaning around that year. We saw that in a dramatic effect on April fifteenth, twenty twenty, after WrestleMania with that mass schedule of releases. But you know, this isn't without precedent. Having Andrade released now doesn't mean we won't get that because that same thing happened to FTR, the revival. The revival were released before the all those mass releases. I think it was March, late March, early April, before WrestleMania. So that could still very much happen. But yes, overall, a bloody shock. Uh, <laughs> like and quite a baffling thing to happen in terms of timing with the fast lane. Um, pay-per-view, WWE presumably wanting people to pay attention to that rather than them firing someone or someone wanting out of their company so bad they have to release them. Andrade, it's exciting. He can now go out there and hopefully work elsewhere. 
And where do you think he's going to go? What do you want to see him do next? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll try and reply to as many of them as I can. I'm off to bloody ride a fast lane review now. Uh, I've got to do that, so that will be up later. Remember to subscribe, enable notifications to always on. Go over to the Wrestle Talk podcast channel as well, because Luke and I will have a full podcast review of Fastlane. I thought it was a great show, as a spoiler there, later today, where I will be finding out who blew me up. That's what this cast is. It's a sling, because I hurt my arm. Yeah, and go over to WrestleTalk.com because I'm sure there will be loads more breaking news throughout the day as we learn more about this story. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, smash the thumbs up button, folks. Leave a comment down below and go and watch another video.